and you're all the way from Europe, so welcome to Singapore. Thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for joining my session and good morning. Uh, am I audible? Thank you. And uh, it looks like there was a lot of fun in the social event last night. Um, so let me take you through this session on how to scale MongoDB. Um, my name is Igor and uh, I'm working as a principal consultant at PTM in the open source database practice. Um, PTN has uh, more than 25 years of experience uh, in managed database services, uh, 450 plus uh, experts across the globe. We, ha we are a premium uh, partner with most of the cloud providers. Uh, recently we started supporting SAP, uh, Snowflake, um, and uh, we have uh, customers across the globe. So in this session today, we will uh, start with uh, MongoDB high availability and how MongoDB achieves high availability, discuss a little bit about replica sets, its components and deployment topologies. Then we'll move into scaling, horizontal and uh, vertical scaling. What is a sharded cluster in MongoDB and its components? Uh, and at the end, we'll see uh, what are the sharding strategies uh, with MongoDB. So let's start with high availability. Uh, high availability usually refers to systems that are durable and are likely to operate uh, without a failure for a long time. Uh, if we take a look at the systems uh, on this diagram, like system A, B, and C, um, if there is application connecting to the system A, which uh, system A refers to as a database, if this database fails, then the entire system fails. Then it means system A doesn't have any fault tolerance. As soon as the, this database fails, the entire system is down. System B looks like it has a fault tolerance of 1. But that might not always be the case. With systems that have a standby secondary that uh, it will take over when the primary fails, in most cases it's necessary that someone else decides whether this other is convenient to take the, the traffic or maybe just there is a network partition between these two. So it's not always easy when there are just two nodes in the system to decide which one will be the, the new primary. While in system C, system C has a uh, fault tolerance of two nodes because at any given of time, if two nodes out of five go down, the rest have majority. So it's always, um, uh, there is always the majority of the nodes to elect and decide what would be the, the new primary. So with MongoDB, MongoDB uh, achieves um, high availability by replication, and there's just a group of processes that maintain the same data set. There is a concept of primary, and that's where all the writes go uh, from the application connecting through a driver. And there are secondary nodes uh, which provide redundancy for high availability as well as the secondary nodes can be used for scaling grids. The driver has uh, options for uh, sending grids with read preference to a primary or to a secondary. And there are other read preferences like primary preferred, secondary preferred, or nearest. The failover in a MongoDB replica set is automatic, which means the primary goes down, then the rest of the nodes will form election 
and it will decide what would be the, the new primary. But for that, there has to be an um, odd number of voting members. Um, some of the configuration options for MongoDB replica set are that uh, the limit of uh, nodes in a single replica set is 50, and seven out of those uh, can be voting members. Uh, there is also a node type arbiter which just participates in elections and it doesn't hold any data. Priority zero node means that it's a secondary node it doesn't participate in election and it will never be elected as a primary, but it has votes. A hidden node is also a priority zero node, uh, but with a difference that the hidden node is not visible to the application from a driver perspective. And there is also a delayed node. The delayed node is uh, also a secondary node with replication delay. So it's usually used for uh, disaster recovery purposes, uh, taking backups and uh, things like that. Um, another feature in MongoDB replica sets uh, is uh, configuring the secondary nodes uh, with tags, and this is good for scaling grids. So if we have our primary node, let's say in Singapore, uh, there are seven uh, voting replica set. Uh, there are seven voting members in this replica set, uh, and the rest are uh, non-voting members. If we configure the replication members into tags, we can do local reads. Uh, our application, if it's uh, North America based, with tag options, we can direct the reading just for the nodes that have the tag North America. And we can do the same uh, with Europe or Australia or Japan or whatever we configure with the tags. So this way we can scale our reads, uh, adding more members as well as use data locality. Uh, that will work just for reading data uh, any write that this application from North America will do will have to go to the primary node. So let's, uh, let's move uh, into scaling. And in general, every process, uh, including databases, uh, when the working set outgrows the memory, uh, it's usually time for scaling. Uh, with the database, that will be usually, um, we, we want to fit the indexes in memory and plus the working set. So as the databases grow over time, it, at one point of time, the working set would, will outgrow. So we will have to start thinking about adding more memory or uh, even uh, more CPU power to to the instance that the database is hosted. And the first thing that we uh, can do with uh, any uh, scaling, uh, including uh, applications or databases, is that we need to grow the, the instance. So when we think about vertical scaling, the first machine worked for a while, it served its purposes, then we need to grow uh, vertically. So we need to increase the machine, we need to make it bigger. Uh, in terms of uh, computing power and uh, systems, uh, this is an example from uh, GCP. Uh, if we start with a small instance and we have, let's say, 8 gigabytes of memory, that will serve for a while. As soon as our database outgrows and the working set no longer fits, we need to increase the instance size. And we can do that up to certain limit. Um, vertical scaling cannot go above some physical limitations that, uh, for example, in GCP, we cannot go above this M2 uh, Mega Mem 416 instance. <clears throat> Even if we do, uh, probably this will cost us a lot more 
than, for example, if we go with horizontal scaling. So horizontal scaling is instead of building the machines up and increasing the memory and CPU, we want to partition the data, we want to parallelize the workload and so that uh, more instances in parallel will, will do the same job and uh, return uh, the results. And uh, in the uh, computer world, uh, that will be uh, adding more instances in parallel, but adding instances in parallel means uh, more operations work, so it adds a little bit of complexity. We need to know when we will query is our data on ABC, uh, how do we return the data, whether we need to query all of these machines or whether we need to send a query just to a single machine. Um, and horizontal scaling uh, at the beginning, if we just initially start with horizontal scaling, it is more expensive compared to vertical scaling, but after some time, if we decide that we need to scale, horizontal scaling costs grows uh, linearly uh, compared to vertical scaling, which almost grows exponentially. So there is a, a time where we just need to decide whether we want to keep growing horizontally or uh, uh, vertically or just go with horizontal. So all these complexities about scaling with uh, MongoDB are uh, solved with uh, the MongoDB sharding. And um, MongoDB sharding is just uh, a cluster environment where we split the data across multiple instances. We, we shard. It's not uh, just adding a pool of of resources, but the data is actually partitioned across multiple shards. And the components in a MongoDB shard are shards. This is where actually the data lives and uh, it's partitioned. Then there is the metadata on the config servers. And this is where the information about each document in the MongoDB database uh, where it exists, it has uh, config metadata, and there is a MongoDB router, or the MongoS, that is basically the interface between the application and the cluster, and the router is just uh, getting all the, the metadata from the config servers, and it routes the queries. So the shards are just a uh, subset of the entire data from the cluster. Each document in the cluster exists only once and it exists on a single shard. There is a primary shard for each database in the system and the primary shard is defined when the database is created initially through the MongoS. MongoDB, MongoS router will decide what would be the primary shard for this database. So if we have a database that has a collection which doesn't have sharding enabled, that collection will only exist on the shard where the primary database is. And it doesn't get distributed across the shards automatically. We need to enable sharding for that collection decide what would be the shard key, and then it gets distributed across the shards. So in this case, collection one has sharding enabled. It will be more or less evenly distributed across the shard. For collection number two, there is no sharding enabled. It will only exist on shard A, where the primary database for this collection is. And that's kind of important because if we have many collections that are not sharded, then we are potentially making a single shard a bottleneck because that's where most of the queries for these collections will go. And
and the config servers are just uh, the part, the uh, metadata of the cluster where when we decide to shard, that is where all the information is stored, what documents, where do they exist, and how the, the MongoS will route the queries to the shards to get the result. Uh, starting with MongoDB version 3.4, which is already out of life a long time ago. Um, the balancer is running on the primary node of the config servers, and this uh, also run as a replica set for high availability. Um, and also on the config servers, there is the admin database uh, that stores all the information about uh, the users and the authentication and um, privileges on the system. The balancer uh, we'll talk uh, about that uh, later, but it's a process that uh, we define what is the balancer window uh, in a cluster. So we can enable balancing during the night, and during the day the balancer will stop and not migrate any data, so uh, it's flexible. And the last piece of the shared uh, cluster is MongoS, which is just uh, a router and uh, it doesn't uh, have any persistent state. It uh, has all the metadata uh, in memory and it just routes the queries to the shard where uh, it gets the metadata from the config server, refreshes the state, and when a query is sent, it uh, makes a decision where to send the, the query to which shard. Um, since version 4.4, uh, MongoS supports hatched reads, uh, which means that if we are reading data from a secondary node, it will uh, distribute the query to the secondary nodes in a cluster, in the shard, and the fastest that returns the, the response, then that will be uh, returned to the customer via the driver. <clears throat> so there are two uh, options for sharding with MongoDB. Uh, the first one is range-based sharding. And with range-based sharding, it's just uh, dividing the data into continuous ranges. Uh, with this type of sharding, it's more likely that the documents that have close values will live in a close chunk and potentially will live in a uh, in the same shard. So when we send a uh, range query to the cluster, it's more likely that this range query will end up on the single shard, and with that we have a query isolation. So we are eliminating uh, potentially the scatter gather query, which means a broadcast query will have to go from shard 1 to shard n, scan all the documents, and then return the result. Range-based sharding, if uh, the shard key uh, is uh, properly defined, should eliminate that, and we should have better query isolation with this type of, of sharding. Instead, if we go with hashed-based sharding, Every document on the key that we decide to shard, uh, the cluster will uh, decide uh, it has a hash function. The application doesn't need to compute that. The cluster will have a hash function, and it will uh, create a, a hash of the shard key. And with this, uh, the data will be randomly distributed. So by doing this, we can have a better data distribution across the cluster, across the shards, but with the expense of uh, not good query isolation when we are scanning a range of shard keys. And the data in the cluster is separated in a logical units called chunks. So that's just a continuous range of uh, documents. Starting MongoDB version 6, the default chunk size is 128 megabytes. Uh, previously, it was 64. 
and it's customizable. Uh, we can configure it between one megabyte and, and one gigabyte. Um, if we uh, lower the chunk size to something that's uh, close to one megabyte, then we'll have a lot of uh, chunks. Yeah. The data will be more evenly uh, distributed with the expense of uh, having many chunk migrations across the shards. If we go with an upper uh, chunk size, <coughs> then uh, there will be less chunk migrations in the cluster, but the data might not be that evenly uh, distributed. And uh, also starting with MongoDB version 6, which is the latest, uh, we have uh, this uh, balancing of data instead of chunks. So previously, the balancer was just making sure each chart has uh, the same number of chunks. Starting with version 6, uh, the balancer is just uh, making sure each shard has the same amount of, of data. And some uh, tips on choosing shard key. Uh, we're running out of time, but uh, a good shard key should have very high cardinality, low frequency, and it shouldn't be a monotonically changing shard key. Uh, again, as the same as replica sets, we have a configuration option zones. So we can localize data, uh, let's say, if we want to localize data on uh, North America, we can tag the shards as North America, and the shard key, if it has the North America tag, will have the documents only live in those shards. And this is good, uh, for example, with the GDPR rules, uh, we usually have applications that need to leave their data in Europe, and so we can localize that data and live only in Europe. And uh, some summary for uh, best practices deploying uh, and scaling applications on MongoDB. Scaling should be uh, a resort when we no longer have vertical scaling options, but if we can run the system as a replica set, it's better that we keep replica sets instead of clusters and then move to uh, sharded clusters uh, when we really need to scale. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Igor. Do we have questions for Igor? Yeah. Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, I have a question that like when you do sharding, uh, you always introduce some problems like uh, cons data consistency between shards, something like this. I have heard that Mongo added uh, support for distributed transactions. Uh, what is the current state of this work in Mongo? Um, yes, so there, there are uh, distributed transactions with MongoDB. So it, a transaction is uh, basically uh, when we commit, it's uh, either uh, committed or if we want to roll back, uh, then it's rolled back. But uh, that's not the, the, the bigger problem uh, when we want to save data on a distributed system. Um, there are other problems with MongoDB uh, on a replica set uh, based. I don't know if we have enough time, we can discuss out, but uh, if uh, document is inserted on, on a primary node and that primary fails, then it doesn't guarantee that it will be replicated on the secondaries. And a secondary may be elected as a primary that doesn't have replicated the document. So we need to make sure that the right concern is set properly. And MongoDB has right concerns which can be one, two, or n the, the number of the nodes or majority, which means it gets replicated to the majority of the nodes, and that that's what can uh, guarantee our rights are uh, happened across the the replica set, and it, that includes the cluster. Do we have any other question for Rager?
from the sharding and uh, distribution standpoint, is there any built-in tool or some tooling to show the distribution? Like, how do you know if it's equally distributed or not? Yes, there is a, a commands that can be run on a MongoS, which is uh, SH status, for example, which shows the status on the cluster. Then there is a, on a collection level, sh.collection.com, get sharding distribution for example so it prints out a summary per shard how many documents uh, the average document size and with percentage of uh, data localization do you have to run statistics or get the up -to -date? no it, it's uh, it's already updated in the metadata okay it's automatically updated thanks thank you for your speech is there any recommendations for hash-based sharding instead of range-based sharding, or perhaps some use cases? Yes. Hash-based sharding is, in general, better for more even data distribution. And we have when we have uh, more write-intensive workloads, while range-based sharding is, even in the latest version of MongoDB, range-based sharding uh, has uh, sorted out the issue with uh, not even data distribution, but with range-based sharding, the benefits are that we have uh, local per shard reads, and it, we, we don't we eliminate the broadcast operations. A broadcast operation on the cluster means we are sending the query to all the shards. And that increase late, that adds latency. The the query response is slower instead of just directing a query to a single shard and getting the, the result back. That's all, and we have for questions. Thank you very much, Hagen.